So you mean she would come upstairs for breakfast and Gary would be sitting there drinking his coffee and be like, did you make your bed? Before you eat this breakfast, and by the way, this eggs and toast, it costs $5. I'm gonna need your $2.50 for your half of it, but did you make your bed? Huh? What's up, y'all? It's your girl Roxy with Roxy Says, and we're going to talk about it. So today we are discussing the expose article that just dropped about the Golden Bachelor, Gary Turner. Now, if you have been here for any bit of time, you already know that I had already posed the question about Gary's authenticity. And I always reminded everyone to just keep it in the back of their heads that we don't know this man, right? We really don't know anything about Gary. He's received the angel edit of just being the perfect guy that any one of these women would be lucky to be picked by. But now this article is proposing that that might not be the case and that our golden bachelor might not be so golden. So this video is gonna be super quick because it's just about the mess, it's just about the tea, okay? It's really nothing to argue about. It's you believe it or you don't believe it. So the Hollywood Reporter dropped this article and we're just gonna go through it really quickly. So 72 year old Gary Turner was very touching as he presented himself as a grieving widower. He told E.T. that he hasn't dated in 45 years, but it turns out that that was a lie. He actually had multiple relationships, one that was actually three years and started just one month after his wife passed away. So someone was very shocked to watch the show and hear Gary say that he hasn't been kissed in six years. And we're going to talk more about that later. But remember in my previous review where Leslie asked Gary, when was the last time that he was intimate? Okay. And she told him that it was a year for her. And he told her, oh, it's been some time. And I said, uh, uh, you need to be a little bit more specific, right? I, th <laughs> <laughs> but now thinking about that scene and reading this article, it's, it makes me laugh because it's like, oh, maybe that's why he wasn't specific because he has been intimate a bit more recently than he's been letting on, right? So let's go on. The article states, it was a dramatic backstory, but our bachelor was able to switch gears and interact easily with the attractive and equally senior female contestants on the show. In doing so, he displayed such emotional awareness, authenticity, and willingness to listen that his whole persona seemed to have been cooked up in some perfect man lab. Didn't I say when Gary was doing the hometowns that all of his answers were so perfect to everything? Child, let's go on. Then they quote Gary as saying, I mean, I haven't dated in 45 years, he told Entertainment Tonight. This made him a hugely compelling character. He seemed so wholesome and almost preacherly that on The Daily Show, comedian Lewis Black joked, this guy is like the word, <laughs> this guy is like if the word G Willikers became a person. <laughs> And he is. That is what we see when we look at Gary. He's just like this super sweet, magoo, just innocent guy, right? So the article goes on to say, recently Turner appeared on Justin Long's Life is Short podcast and told the host about the elaborate screening process he was subjected to. Gary says, I had to send my fingerprints to the FBI. There were numerous background tests. There was a psychological evaluation that was like 360 questions and then another hour of interview, he said. The vetting process is ridiculously thorough. So the Hollywood Reporter really did their homework with this article because they have uh, text messages, phone records, they got hospital bills, they are on Gary's ass, okay? The article also states they've discovered several inconsistencies regarding both Gary's work history and recent romantic entanglements ooh, <laughs> that contradict the received narrative. Now, the article also claims that they don't know if production was honestly unaware of Gary's past or if production purposefully ignored these details. But nonetheless, The Hollywood Reporter does feel that production presented an incomplete and misleading image of Gary. So the first thing that they mention is Gary's work history. You know that Gary has presented himself as a retired restaurateur. But the article states that according to his profile on LinkedIn, Gary last owned a restaurant in 1985. And after that, he held various sales and management positions in the meat business, again, per his LinkedIn resume, which does not list an end date for his employment. The article continues to state that does not match up with the idea pushed on the show that he retired at the young age of 55, which would have been in 2006, 
never mentioned are his years of pickup post-retirement work, like the installing of hot tubs at the Gannon Pools near Davenport, Iowa, as confirmed by the owner. So they reached out to the owner who confirmed, yes, Gary was working there. I guess I should still say allegedly because I don't know. <laughs> but they reached out to his previous employers. They go on to say he then worked as a maintenance man at the Vera French Mental Health Center, also in the Davenport area, as verified by his colleagues who spoke highly of him. So for some people, that might be a big deal. And for others, it might not be. But I feel like on the show, they've given us the impression that Gary's just chilling. You know, he's at home. He's enjoying his lake house, his grandkids, and he's retired. He's home. He's not actively working. But this article is saying that Gary might not be as financially free in his retirement as is being portrayed on the show. And that brings me back to the conversation that Gary had with Teresa. Remember about what she does for work. And I did see a lot of people in the comments and on Twitter saying that they feel like Gary showed a greater interest in Teresa after that conversation about her employment. And I also said in my previous video that if he does pick Teresa, and by the time that this video goes up, we'll know who he picked. I feel like if Gary does pick Teresa, it will be because of stability, right? It will be because she worships the ground that he walks on. And now knowing what we know here, and we're going to get into how Gary likes to um, handle his finances a bit later in this article as well, it makes even more sense as to why he would want to be with a woman like Teresa who can pay to foot the bill, okay? So next, the article brings up a woman who has requested to go by the name of Carolyn because she does not want, you know, her real name out there. She doesn't want people chasing her down, knocking her doors down, asking her questions about Gary. And before we go on, I will say that I think that her wanting to remain anonymous is a good look for her because she's not looking for the publicity. She's not looking for the popularity. She's not trying to get a primetime interview. You know what I'm saying? I feel like she just saw her ex on TV and he's being portrayed as this awesome person. And she's like, yeah, no, 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 no. That's not the deal. I'm going to just make sure that everyone is aware that he's not who he's presented himself to be, but I don't want any clout from it, right? I'm just giving you all that information. Tell me what you think below. So the article goes on to say that Carolyn didn't want the years of her life as the Golden Bachelor's girlfriend to become national news, but neither did she want to be the invisible woman. She said she began innocently dating Gary just one month after Tony past. Mm. Okay. She's 14 years his junior. See that I don't really have an issue with because her and Gary are both grown, grown, grown. So I don't really have an issue with that, but they dated for 10 months and then lived together for one year and nine months. The Hollywood reporter says that this account is drawn from interviews with Carolyn, as well as friends she confided in at the time and text messages with Gary among other documents. Okay. So they like, don't come for us. We did our homework. <laughs> okay. The article goes on to say, it's not an issue that he dated. He was a widower. He was single. The issue is how he regularly yanked viewers' heartstrings with the on-air announcements about his lack of a love life since his wife died. Now, yeah, as we watched the show, Gary was very adamant on letting us know that he has been lacking love, that he's hoping to get his second chance at love on this show. So as a viewer, it wouldn't be far-fetched to assume that Gary has not dated anyone since his wife passed. That is definitely the picture that production has painted for us during this season, right? He didn't mention that he was in a three-year relationship here or a five-year relationship here. No, it's pretty much, hey, I've been lonely this entire time. The article goes on to say that they even spoke to one of Carolyn's friends, Susan. No, not that Susan. <laughs> not that Susan. But Susan said, I just can't believe this happened to my girlfriend. When Carolyn and Jerry first started dating in September 2017, my husband and I took them to an Iowa football game. I thought this guy's legit. This guy's a really good guy for her. Now that's Susan referring to Gary who's dating her friend Carolyn, okay? So Susan was surprised when she's watching the show and hears Gary say the line about not having been kissed in six years. So Susan is looking at her TV like, what? We were just with you and Carolyn, sir. You have, you've been kissing, okay? What are you talking about? And the article quotes Susan is saying, he's got to know that people are paying attention to this show. I'm just flabbergasted. So another thing that Gary's alleged ex Carolyn is upset about is that Gary is using the same lines on the other ladies that he used on her, okay? So one of the things that Gary said was, damn, I go to bed at night thinking of you and I wake up in the morning thinking of you. He texts that to Carolyn on September 2nd, 2017. 
Child, they got receipts, okay? <laughs> Less than three months after Tony's death, in a message viewed by The Hollywood Reporter. And apparently one of the things that he said to Leslie in Costa Rica was, I have to have my coffee with you in the morning. I have to have you when I go to bed at night. I do remember him saying that. Um, he's also said that to Carolyn, okay? Maybe that's just his, maybe that's just his go-to line. Maybe Gary don't got that much game. Maybe he just got three, four, five lines and he's stuck with those lines and maybe that's, <laughs> maybe that's all he got, okay? So now we're getting into how Gary and Carolyn met, right? So Carolyn says that her and the staff at the mental health community in Davenport threw Gary a retirement party before his move to the lake house with Tony. So Gary was well-liked and they were shocked and saddened to find out that Tony had passed shortly after. She said that in August, she got a call from Gary saying that he was coming back to Davenport to handle some things with Tony's estate and he asked her if she she could help him donate some of Tony's clothes to dress for success. I love that. That's a great cause, right? And of course, Carolyn was more than happy to help him. And she also says that Gary took her out to dinner after that as a thank you. And she felt that it was pretty innocent, right? Carolyn says that I just really didn't see it until I went back and looked at my text messages. I never realized Gary's text had turned hot and heavy so relatively soon. The article continues to say, indeed, an eager and self-deprecating Gary joked while texting, quote, I got lucky when you first said that you would go to dinner with me two weeks ago. I mean, how often does an old geezer get the beautiful girl? End quote. Aw, Gary. Soon thereafter, Gary texted, you're the right woman for me. No need to look further. Gary, you sure love telling people that they're your girl and they the one, huh? I see you, Gary. Okay. Here's where it gets... Child... Okay. Mm. So Gary asked her to move to the lake house shortly after, but it took her a year of dating him to feel comfortable doing so. So during that time, she would drive back and forth from uh, what Iowa to Indiana, five, five hours, hours to visit him. She, she would drive back and forth to visit him. Okay. And remember, that's why I said, is Gary willing to uproot his life to move for any of these ladies? Cause it don't seem like he's that willing. It seemed like whatever's going on, you gonna have to come to him. That's what it's looking like from this article as well. The article goes on to say when she finally uprooted her life in Iowa to move to the lake house with him, Gary promised her elderly mom that he intended to eventually marry Carolyn. Okay, so G Gary, you be saying the same lines to all the ladies. Gary sure does love making promises to people's family, doesn't he? Mm. She tells The Hollywood Reporter that he suggested she quit her job and get a new one near the lake house. This proved impossible since it's in the middle of nowhere, as she put it. But she did get an accounting job with the company in Fort Wayne, nearly an hour's commute each way. Child, that part had me cracking up because remember on the date where Teresa said, I'll quit my job for you. I'll quit my job for the right person. And I'm like, girl, don't quit your job for this man. So I can just imagine if this stuff is true, I can just imagine what was going on in Gary's head on, while on this date with Teresa. Like, damn, she'll quit her job. Damn, she make money. This is, this is perfect. This is just what I need. But wait, there's more. So Carolyn arrived to the lake house the last weekend of July, 2018. The Hollywood reporter has viewed mail that was sent to her at this house and the background check listed his address as her primary residence for that period. So they're like, she lived here, okay? This ain't no, we ain't making it up. We verified this lady. Oop. <laughs> we verified this lady lived here for the time that she's saying she did. But she said it was after she moved in, that's when the surprises started. Gary told Carolyn that her share of the expenses would be about $1,000 per month, which Carolyn negotiated down to $850. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. So you bothered this lady for a year to uproot her life to come live with you in the lake house so that she could help you pay the bills. Because, Gary, if you was trying to um, court this lady and sweep her off her feet, this lady who's 14 years younger than you, right? And you're like, come, baby, come stay in my lake house with me. And then the day that she get there, you're like, okay, yeah, your calculator out. And you're like, oh, here's your half of the bills. Here's this, here's this. First of all, Carolyn, baby, you should have confirmed that before you uprooted your life and moved over there. You should have made sure you had the conversation like, hey, and like, what? what's the... What's what? What's the deal? What's going to happen once I move there? It looks like they didn't have much of that conversation. But as soon as she dropped her suitcase on them steps, Gary was like, hey, boo, welcome. 
This is what you gotta pay if you wanna stay here, okay? Like, child, that had me cracking up. In addition to that, they would go Dutch on all meals except on special occasions. She remembers him telling her. At restaurants, Carolyn paid her half in advance. <laughs> let, me, let me say that again. Carolyn paid her half in advance. And then when the check came, Gary paid the whole tab like a big man. So she would have to give Gary her half of the money before they went into the restaurant so that when they were at the restaurant and it was time to pay, he could pull out all the money as if he was paying for the. To me, that is absolutely ridiculous. Y'all have been together for over a year. You are living together. And you telling me she got to slide you money under the table or give it to you before the day. Either you pay for the day or she pay for the day. Like that makes Gary seem very insecure. He has this macho mentality where it's your job to help him maintain the image that he is the boss and that he's paying all the bills when behind closed doors you had to give him your half of the dinner before y'all walked in the restaurant. Are you kidding me? That's ridiculous. That's why he would love Teresa. He probably wouldn't even have to ask Teresa to give him the money before the date because Teresa probably already has her direct deposit set up to a joint bank account with her and Gary that only Gary has access to. <laughs> Oh, poor Teresa. But as for Carolyn, child, she should have stayed exactly where she was at in Iowa than to come uproot her life for this mess. Yeah, hell no. She also says that in the mornings, Gary insisted that she made her bed before she came upstairs for breakfast. So you mean she would come upstairs for breakfast and Gary would be sitting there drinking his coffee and be like, did you make your bed? Before you eat this breakfast, and by the way, this eggs and toast, it costs $5. I'm going to need your $2.50 for your half of it, but did you make your bed? Hell no. But here is where it gets even worse, okay? So Carolyn says that she was packing for Gary's high school reunion set to take place in October 2019. And Gary turns to her and he says, I'm not taking you to the reunion looking like that. Carolyn recalls him saying as he pointed to her body, she'd put on 10 pounds from stress, she says, but certainly wasn't fat. Ah, 10 pounds, whatever. First of all, Gary, you're rude. That's rude as hell, okay? But yeah, according to her, Gary did not take her to his high school reunion because she had gained weight. The article goes on to say that the disinvitation led to the breakup. Gary told Carolyn to be out by January 1st, 2020. He volunteered to cover the cost of her U-Haul as long as she paid the vendor and he reimbursed her. Carolyn says that she spent her first packing day alone while Gary was out. She says she was so frazzled that she fell down the stairs requiring a trip to the ER and foot surgery the following day as confirmed by a hospital bill viewed by THR. Gary arrived home that night and as Carolyn recalls, accused her, accused her of using the fall as an excuse to prolong her stay and suggested that she was planning to sue him for causing the injury. That's y'all boy, that's y'all golden bachelor, okay. In the end, she says, he refused to allow Carolyn to stay in their love nest during the final week of the two weeks notice she was required to give her boss before leaving her job. He told her to go get a hotel. <laughs> it was the dead of winter and Carolyn struggled to get to her car in her walker. She injured her foot, so she's on a walker in the middle of winter having to move out of this man's house into a hotel. The house that he had begged her for a year to move into, to uproot her life in Iowa, quit her job, come to this house, pay half the bills, get disinvited from his high school reunion, fall down the damn stairs, and then get kicked out in the middle of winter to go stay in a hotel. So anyways, like I was saying, it was the dead of winter and Carolyn struggled to get to her car in her walker, Jerry at her side, as she recalls. She might have been any one of those roseless golden bachelorettes told by a suddenly somber Jesse Palmer to take a minute and gather your things. I really wish this would have worked out, she remembers Gary telling her. Call me when you get to your hotel so I know you made it safe. Oh, that Jerry, such a damn gentleman. That's it, y'all. Okay, that's the little expose article about Gary. People are on Twitter losing their minds like, no, Grandpa, how could you do this to us? <laughs> 
Listen, at the end of the day, these shows are edited, edited and produced, and as we all know, okay? I already kind of had my eye on Jerry. Like, look, we don't know nothing about this guy. He always knows just what to say. But at the end of the day, we don't know. We've never seen any of his red flags. But this article is letting us know, like, mm, he got a few. This is why, and I've mentioned this in my Love is Blind reviews, I want a golden version of Love is Blind, okay? Because at least in the pods, we can see everybody's red flags. Whereas in this show, we just see Gary as this angel and we only see the ladies' red flags, right? That's why I really like Love is Blind because we can see people acting a damn fool in the pods. We can see everyone. Please give us a golden version of Love is Blind. I would love that. Anyway, tell me all your thoughts below. I will be watching and reviewing the finale of The Golden Bachelor. So make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so that you do not miss my next video. And we'll talk about everything as usual. I'll see y'all in my next video. Bye! Bye. 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 Bye.